At the end of the day, we're approving CMAC in abatement for eight years at a four to six million dollar uh, abatement. And then we have a list currently that I did not bring with me that has a, like a checklist. Okay, if you get eight years and your facility is this big and you have this many employees, there's a scale. And that's what I was basically going to hand them, that this is what we make everybody else do. Um, and depending on how many employees they're doing, Chris is saying, we'll work with the administration. Basically, that's what I was going to do, make them follow the same thing we have everybody else do. That, that document has already been created from years ago, and the council passed that. Mr. Johnson, when we do that, maybe seven, six, seven years ago? You remember offhand? Yeah, roughly. Okay, somewhere in there. So that document somewhere I can send it to you guys. So it's it's a benchmark. Basically, if you fall within here, you get this much, and then depending on how many your you know how many employees, here it is right here. Is this our abatement thing? This is PA one ninety eight. So yeah. While you're looking that up, uh, Councilwoman Daniel. Yeah, so um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. So the, the previous ones, all of the terms and everything came before the council, so the council could vote on all of the terms that you guys are talking about. So I think that's where Ms. Brandon is, is questioning, because basically what you're saying is that instead of the council making the decision on all the terms that would normally come before them, you're allowing... Um, Aerotropolis. Aerotropolis to make those decisions in in place of us. Is that correct? So through the chair, the only decision that Aerotropolis is making is they're going to do all the paperwork to a give the abatement, which you're approving tonight, to give them the authority to give them the abatement for eight years at a four to six million dollar profit. But all of the terms is is where the question is because you're, you keep saying that the jobs would go you know they would there would have to be so many all of that has not been agreed upon yet it would it would basically be determined after the fact through the chair scott do you even know how many people you're going to be hiring at this point well no because we we bid on multiple programs it could, I could be multiple so business. so through the chair that's the problem there's still a process that they're going through to where they don't need to know or don't even know how many people they're going to be hiring in. What I'm going to do is look at that sheet that we currently have, and I will say, just like every other business that we've done in the past, this is what I expect out of you guys. Now, there's always specific type jobs, depending on what type of businesses they have in there, there's going to be specialty jobs that are required that the average citizen might not be able to do. So there's a little, there's some wiggle room in there. However, I'm going to make them follow that is currently our standard right now. That's what they're going to have to follow. Chairman. Sorry, Mr. Johnson, if you want to be right there. Yes. Uh, so what, what is our annual dues to the Aerotropolis? $25,000. And how long have we been paying that? Since, since we've been. 2009. 2009. Yeah. So this is the first time we're in the project that you guys are handling? That's right. So I, I just don't see the downside to this. They're going to, you're going to bring the other to us. Correct. So through the chair, I, I'm saying publicly that once Mr. Christie figures out their game plan, I will bring to you and say this is how many people they're going to hire, this is what we're going to do, and this is... Our, our current sheet that we have on file right now that's been approved by council years ago. So this is what I'm going to expect CMAC to do. Yeah. Councilman Brandon. Could I get a copy of this uh, <clears throat> schedule for abatements? Yes. Because I, I recall them coming before us, you know, H1. We, we didn't have so, them. So, so sure you've up. always approved abatements. I, um, I, I, it's been a while. I'm just mm -hmm. asking the question. You know what yes. I mean? So you created an abatement schedule eight years ago? Roughly, yes. Okay. So if I could get a copy of that, that'd be great. I'd like to see that. Sure. So you don't do it separately per business. What are they doing? How many people they're going to employ? It's just a straight line. This it, is the abatement it, you're going to get. So it made it a little easier so certain people didn't get special treatment, so to speak. Now, the council can decide, like, okay, just because CMAC falls in this range, 
city council could say, well, no, I either want to give them more or I want to give them less. You know, it, it's, it's up to them. But we, um, the previous mayor, and, and we agreed with them on council that we said, you know, we should probably have a standard set. So everybody, if you fall within this amount, then you qualify for this. And council agreed with that idea, and that's what we voted on. And then that also had a subsection to where if you hire so many people, so many of those people should be Taylor resident. And then there was some other um, things in there too that I can't remember offhand to be honest sure. with you. So I'm going to, once they figure everything out, they will, uh, I will give that form to Chris and Mr. Christie and we'll sit down and that's what I'm gonna hold them to and expect them to follow. And um, I will let city council know, and I will share that document with all of you tomorrow. Council Woman Witt. Mr. I'm not going to say Girdwood. Yeah. Did I say it right? Okay. Um, so your board votes on this. Yeah, that's right. And your board and mayor is, sits on the board. So through the chair, okay. yes. And then there's, do you want to say who else is on the board? Yeah, yeah, happy to. So uh, two members of Wayne County, two members of the Wayne County Airport Authority, the mayor of Romulus, the supervisor of Huron Township. Supervisor of Van Buren Township, a member of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, and the administrator of Washtenaw County. You're lucky because I was looking. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so these are people all skilled in, I think, doing this. So it, 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 it's definitely unconventional, I think, to what we're used to, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, Aerotropolis was designed for, this. I think, these type of projects. So. I know, I mean, that's why I asked the question, because I was like, well, where's the rest of the stuff, and what's the dollar amounts, and what's the job? So I, I definitely think it's not what we're used to, but I don't, I want to say, I don't think that's necessarily bad. Um, as Mr. Johnson mentioned, like, we've paid these dues. Our mayor sits on the board. Um, Chris has proven himself, I think, that he, he keeps in very regular communication with the city on, I mean, really, he actually reports, like, every meeting he goes to. Um, so I, I think he's responsible with the money, and and I think he would be responsible with this project. And, and through the chair, that's a great way of putting it. And I never knew of this until I sat on the board, mm -hmm. and Chris explained this to me. And I said, why why wouldn't we take advantage of this? And when I talked to other uh, city officials, they explained to me that they went through this process, and it was a positive outcome for them. And um, so I thought this was a great opportunity to take advantage of this. Okay. So. So if I could, um, and hopefully my comments don't, don't derail this, but um, what has changed from our first time on is each community was kind of was fighting against one another, and some of those connections weren't shared, and some of those promises weren't followed up. Um, in 2009, 2010, um, this is one of my public acts that allowed the, for the creation of Next Michigan Development Corporation. There were five originally allowed. First preference was for Wayne County and for this one. It was such a sought after tool um, and the, the Upper Peninsula felt left out that uh, one of my colleagues ended up getting two more PAs by amending my PA. Uh, so there are a total of seven and these are uh, we're unique in having this, uh, Lansing, I think Grand Rapids. And the idea was that we uh, aren't fighting with one another, right? That we have, everybody knows what these jigsaw pieces are that each community has. And so when they come to Mr. Ger Ger Gerbord and the rest of the team, they say, instead of losing, you know, this company and they go elsewhere because we're fighting amongst, you know, the individual cities, this piece will work for you and we can uh, more consistently move you through, quite frankly, the bureaucracy. And not sure where we're at with our economic development person, uh, but certainly we saw that in the past and we even lost our economic development people and we lost the history and we were constantly retraining them. So I think separate from this individual item here, I'd like to encourage you know, Mr. Or word in and the board to bring more of these things because at least in my mind this area that they're talking about uh, on Northline really should be rebranded uh, Aerotropolis East 
and start to get some branding within the Aerotropolis area and that entire area north of uh, North Line has set fallow, well, for all of history, I think it was zoned industrial probably back in the 50s or 60s. So it was Lakes of Taylor Golf Course. It was just never yeah. built upon. Mr. Chairman, um, I think the one thing that I can say, one of the things that I'm most proud of is that, you know, through the DCC and Aerotropolis, a lot of the communities, we all, like, you know, I use the analogy of baseball all the time. We all want to hit the home run, but we're all just as happy if somebody else does. Because if Romulus lands a big deal, there's a good chance that somebody from Taylor is going to get a job there or somebody that works there might move to Taylor to get closer to that work. So we all believe in a region mentality, and that's from DCC and Aerotropolis, and even Western Wayne. So we all root for each other, and it's really nice. It's great to see. And Aerotropolis with Chris, and Chris, we joke all the time, I was pretty tough on him the first time he stood at that podium, because I was not a fan. But we just had a meeting at Lakes of Taylor, he sets up usually yearly, where we have a lunch that Aerotropolis puts on, and he brings investors, developers, um, all kinds of different people for me to sit down, and I get to learn what's going on in the business. They want to talk to me about Taylor, and we market the city of Taylor, and that area that you just talked about is one of our main topics of discussion. We're trying to get a piece of the, you know, um, there's a lot of development as far as um, there's a lot of things going out at the airport. Um, what's that airport out there? Willow Road. 